Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our spiritual discussion for tonight. So you will be seeing me looking off the screen here just for a couple minutes as I share this out from the laptop. So for tonight's spiritual discussion, remember, this is a discussion between you and I. This is not just me sitting here lecturing. It's not just me sitting here, you know, just talking and talking and talking and not letting anyone ask any questions. Not at all. This is our spiritual discussion, which means, hello, hello, thanks for joining, thanks for being here, which means it is a dialogue between, you know, all of us. And so I will be saying things, there will be things, hey, Marilyn, hey, Karen, hey, Jane, Hey, hello, 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 Lord, oh, goodness, hello, hello, uh, hi, Lorraine, thanks for joining, thanks for being here, so like I said, I am just sharing this out, and if you guys want to do the same, you are more than welcome to, so happy that I can see all of your beautiful comments on the screen today, hi, Tracy, hi, Shirley, thanks for joining, thanks for being here. Hello, Helene. Thanks for joining. Thanks for being here. Like I said, I am just sharing this out. If you guys want to do the same, you are more than welcome to. So remember, this is a spiritual discussion. And so we, you know, I will be putting out, you know, I'll be talking about our topic. And if questions, comments, or concerns arise about our topic, this is where you have the opportunity to go ahead and to you know, ask that question that you have about, you know, the topic that we're talking about. Now, you may be asking, why do you keep saying the topic that we're talking about? Well, because sometimes what tends to happen is people see us having a spiritual discussion and then they'll try to interject some other questions that aren't necessarily about our topic. And I want to keep this as much on our topic as possible because this is a really awesome and important topic that we all need uh, to remember and to learn about deeper. So I'm really excited about it. And like I said, you know, this is an open forum for your questions, comments, and concerns about our topic for tonight. If anything I say, you know, doesn't make sense to you, or maybe it brings up a question for you, that's where you get the opportunity to ask that question. I can't help you if you don't ask the question. And that's what I love about these spiritual discussions is it gives us the opportunity to really, you know, get that dialogue going because that's really what we need is that dialogue. So like I said, I'm just sharing this to my groups. If you would like to share it out to your groups, you're more than welcome to. As we get this sharing started, you know I always love to start with a question to kind of get our minds moving. So here's my question for you as I begin to share this out. My question to all of you is this. What would you rather have people meet? The truth of who you are or the titles that you have given yourself? What do you want people to meet? Do you want people to meet the, the truth of who you are, the essential essence of you? Or do you want, hey, Christine, or do you want people to meet the titles that you have given yourself? And you can go ahead and type your answer into the comments and we'll go from there. Exactly. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes, we want everyone to, we want to meet the truth. So I love the, I love that. Beautiful. Yes, the truth of who you are. The truth, the truth of who I am. Yes, I love it. Now, now that we, you know, we're all kind of answering, oh, we, we want people to meet us with the truth, or we want people to meet the truth of who we are. Absolutely beautiful. Now, I want to ask you this next question, which is a follow-up question. And the follow-up question I want to ask you is, where do you believe specialness comes from? Where do you believe that comes from? What aspect of you, what part of you do you believe that has to make you special? Like what part of you believes uh, that you have to have something special about you for you to be worthy? Maybe that's how you want to put it in your mind. Just think about that. Once again, there's no right answer. There's no wrong answer. There is simply your answer. So just 
go ahead and just put your answer into the, into the comments. You know, where do you think it does? Yes, our thoughts, very true, yes. And maybe we'll say our thoughts, yes, and our perceptions. But then where do those thoughts and perceptions come from? Who's informing those thoughts and perceptions of I need to be special? Who's informing those thoughts? What aspect of yourself is informing that? So just once again, put your answer in the comments. I can't wait to see them. Like I said, there's no right, there's no wrong. It is simply an answer. Hmm. I think it depends. Is a special, the human perspective that can be a lot of things. It indeed can be. But once again, who is the, there, there's that answer. There it is, the ego. Exactly, yes. Now, it doesn't necessarily come from past lives, but what it can do, that past life, you know, specialness can be an aspect of the ego because what is the ego? Oh, where does the ego live? It doesn't live in the present moment. It lives in the past or lives in the future because it can exist in the present moment. So, Karen, that's a wonderful answer as well. So, like I said, I'm just sharing this out to just maybe one or two more groups. So, I love that you guys are putting in these beautiful answers. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, I Let's see. So, Mary says, I think it changes depending on how you feel about yourself at that moment. It very well could be changing at that moment based on your perception of yourself. Very, very true. So, do, do, do. where's my sharing this? Okay. You know what? We'll share it to there, too. Okay. I think I have shared it to all the groups I want to. All right, so we have gotten the consensus that, you know, that need for specialness definitely comes from the ego. Now, do we know, uh, sorry, I was typing and <laughs> lost my train of thought. Uh, workers live, let's see. So I will ask this question then. So we already know where it comes from. We kind of know why it comes in. So my next question really wants to be, then what is the ego then? You know, what is kind of what's your idea of the ego? Because The Course in Miracles has an idea, tells us a beautiful description of what the ego is that I really enjoy. You know, now some people may say ego is edging God out. It, people may say it's a Darwinian process that we have all developed. Some people may say that it is, you know, the dark horse of our lives, the shadow of our lives. Um, some people may call it a friend. Some people may call it a foe. But I love the way that the course uh, really, really kind of brings it in. And what the Course says about the ego is that it's nothing more than the idea of separation. That's all that it is. It is the idea of separation. Nothing more than that. And so I have my whole little, my whole little notes here that I've written down. So the need for specialness comes from the ego. And what is the ego but nothing more than the idea of separation. And what could lead to more separation than, well, I'm special. Like I'm more special than this person, or I'm more special than that. And there's something else that the course really says that I really enjoy, which is, and of course, you can interchange your word for this. I use the word God because it's what feels comfortable to me. If it feels more comfortable for you to say divine source, compassion, Whatever it is for you, that's great. That you use your word. But for me, you know, all the children of God are special, so none of them are special. The ego is scared and it does try to fix. You are absolutely right. But this is where, you know, like I said, the the ego is all about, oh man, I need to be more special. I need to 
you know, I need to be more special so I can continue this idea that I am separate, not only from my source, separate from everyone else, separate from this or that. Now, here's the really interesting part. The ego, when it gets into a relationship, and I'm going to just use this for example, it doesn't mean that, you know, anything good or bad, but let's say you're in a quote unquote twin flame relationship. Oh, honey, let me tell you, that is the ego's playground. Now, the reason it's the ego's playground with this whole twin flame idea is because it's a special relationship. And the ego says, oh, this is a match made in heaven because now you get to say that this person is special and they come, you know, this person is special and I'm special. So now we're special together, but we can exclude everyone else because we're in a special love relationship that's more special than maybe your... Um, not twin flame, but we'll say soul relationship. You know, notice once again, all of these titles and the ego loves to play on this. But before we get any deeper into that topic, let's see, how can we know when specialness is really present of, you know, let's see, can you remind me what a twin flame is? Well, basically a twin flame relationship the way that I have begun to understand it is it is the other half of your soul. And once again, if we're saying that this person now completes you or this person is the complete opposite mirror to you, you know, well, then we have to look at that and say, okay, well, now I'm believing, number one, part of me is missing. Now, not only am I believing that part of me is missing. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. Thanks for being here. Not only am I believing that part of me is missing. Now I'm believing that I'm not whole, pure, and perfect. Now I'm believing that I have to go out into the world and I must find another person to complete me, which we know is completely false. No one can complete you because you already are whole and complete. But that's just a basic like twin flame relationship type of mentality that I have seen. And that's just kind of how I explain it, you know. And so that's why it's a special relationship. So how can we really tell where in our lives, not only in our relationships, but in our lives that we are really having specialness? And these are kind of just the ways that we can see that. So when you identify yourself with what you do, with what you know, or with what you possess. So for example, we can actually see this a lot in the spiritual community. So let's take for example, we'll just say, oh, well, you know, in a past life, I was a high priest of Atlantis. And then, you know, oh, look how special I was a high priest. And then someone else may come along and they wanna be special. Well, you know, in a past life, I was the king of Atlantis. Well, then someone else comes along. Well, in a past life, you know what? I was actually Nikola Tesla and I invented all these wonderful things. Well, you know, in a past life, you know, and, and it just kind of keeps going. So if you are saying that, you know, you are so special because of what you do, maybe in a spiritual sense, you see yourself as a grid worker or maybe a light worker, maybe a healer. Once again, those things aren't good, nor are they bad. They simply are titles. And you can either choose to identify with that title or you can choose to realize that that's just something that you do. Like that's, it's something that you have the ability to do. I believe that is why I have unhappy thoughts about the past that will not go away because I think I believe but, but see, not go away because I think I believe it was special. Ah, well, that very well may be true. And that's, you know, like I said, that's the ego's playground. This person's special and this person and I'm special. And so now we're special together. But if you, and this is something else that you can look at. If, if my role was taken away, if that title was taken away, let's say twin flame relationship, priest king of Atlantis, would I suffer? Would I be less without that relationship or without that title? Think about that just for a minute. Like really think about that to yourself. 
would I consider myself less if I no longer had that relationship and if I no longer had that title? Would that make me less than? Just, and once again, you don't have to put your answer in the comments. That's just something for you to consider, for you to think about. Because sometimes, you know, those thoughts may come up and you're like, ooh, I love that. I am not just a massage therapist or a Reiki practitioner. I am so many things. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And that's what we really have to focus on and really realize is I, those are simply things that I do. Those are not the things that, that is not what I am. I am not a Reiki. I am not just in this box of Reiki practitioner. I'm not just in this box of light worker. I'm not just in this box of uh, empath. I'm not just in this box of healer. Those are things that I do and I'm capable of, but <laughs> that's not all that I am. Now, the ego always wants to put titles and say, this is who you are in the sense of an identity, you know, in the sense of this is my identity. This is who I am. And hi, Fira, thanks for joining. Uh, hi, Patty, thanks for joining. So what we have to remember is that the ego is always going to try to identify. So let's say you identify yourself once again. Hi, Coro, thanks for joining. Let's say you identify yourself as an empath, right? Totally fine. So let's say, but you identify yourself so much with the identity of an empath. And let's say that someone lies to you okay and you don't know you don't really catch that lie you don't feel that it's a lie and then you find out that you were lied to well that then seems to attack your identity of who you think you are hi Rhonda thanks for joining hi Lori thanks for joining so that seems to attack the identity of who you think you are because you're like, oh my gosh, well, I'm a human lie detector. And then I was just lied to. How could I be lied to? So then this, bring, this begins to bring up feelings of unworthiness. And it begins to make you really think about, hmm, well, is that really the truth of who I am? Hi, Christy. You know, is that really the truth of who I am? Am I really just, you know, this empath? And if I am this empath and now I didn't do it, oh my God, am I losing my empathic abilities? Hi. <gasps> You know, and you have this like big panic moment and there's nothing to panic about. It's simply, okay, you were lied to. Like people get lied to, it happens, regardless if you're a human lie detector or not. It's gonna happen. We have to be willing to release the idea that we are just this one thing. And see, this is where we all get stuck. This is where the idea of specialness comes in. Well, you know, I'm a psychic who reads the Akashic Records. Okay, this is why I always tell people all the time, and you can go back and look on all of my broadcasts, I never say I'm special because I'm not. I am not special for what I am able to do because you all can do the same because we all have the exact same abilities and connections to source. Now, you may have a unique way of expressing that. Okay, big difference in, oh my God, I'm so special because I'm um, a light worker and like I'm an empath and I can do all of these things and blah, 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 blah. And it really differs from, well, you know, I am, you know, this is what I enjoy doing. This is something I am able to do. This is my unique expression of the divinity that is within me that wishes to express itself through me. Okay, that's what we have to remember. This is the divine expression through me. So, like I said, you know, we have to really look. If my role was taken away, if my role, my title, my relationship was taken away, then would I suffer? So Patty says, it's like when people have cancer or something wrong with them. We identify what's wrong instead of who they are. Yes, Patty, exactly. That is very true. You know, and what we have to remember, well, no, 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 Rhonda, we don't even want to go into that because that's not special having a unique expression. Everyone has a unique expression. Everyone does. And so we cannot put specialness 
on to anything because the moment that we put specialness on to something is the moment that the ego then has control of it because the ego is always going to want to give that title and say, this is special. No, even me doing this broadcast, this isn't special. I am sure there are hundreds and thousands of other people talking about this topic. You can probably find it on YouTube. You can probably find it other places on Facebook. I'm just giving you my unique expression of how this information delineates through me. Nothing more than that. I never want to see myself as special. And for a lot of people, that's really triggering. They're like, oh, Ron, I can see myself as unique. I'm all about that. Like, I'm totally fine with being unique, but not special. So I have a strong sense of me, which I define as my soul. I am a lot of things, but I just know it's me. Ultimately, because the means I connect to everyone. Where my ego comes in, I wonder, is when people try to define me, it irks me. People always want a label. I find it useless. And, well, you know what? That's very true that, you know, people... There is a sense where people want a definition because they would like to know, you know, kind of what you do in the world, if you will. And, you know, it irks you simply because, you know, you're like, I don't really have a label. I don't really want a label. But I, what we can do is use the label to kind of say, this is an umbrella term. Like I call myself a miracle mindset coach. I know I am not simply putting myself in this box of miracle mindset coaching. But I do, because I do readings. I do so many different things. And what I, that's just a box that I can say, here you go, here's a box that, you know, if this is something you want to look at, great, wonderful. But I know that I do so much more than just miracle mindset coaching. It's just a label that is used, but not one that I necessarily identify myself with. It is an umbrella term in which I can use. So if I find, you know, someone that's saying, oh, you know, this or that, I can just say, well, this is kind of, this is what I do. And that gives them a broader picture. So we are all special, but unique. Yes, we are all special in the eyes of the divine, but we are, and we all have a unique expression of that divinity within us. People love labels. That always bothered me when people put you in a box. You are welcome. My pleasure. Yes, you know, uh, there will be people who, there will be aspects. Now, when we say people, and once again, here comes, we got to be careful of another thing, which we're going to talk about here in just a minute. But when we say people, we have to realize something. Those people are players in our play, okay? Because the Course in Miracles tells us that the world is never happening to us, it's happening from us. We are watching the movie. So if we're watching the movie and, and we are the actor, the director, you know, we did all the casting calls, we gave everyone the script, honey. We gave, ev we gave everyone the script. We have to remember one important thing. If I am saying that these other people are trying to define me and, you know, that really irks me, this, that, and the other thing, which is totally fine, what we also have to realize is when we say those people, let's recognize that those people are not outside of us. Those people are ideas that we have had at one point or another. And they are simply projecting back to us what we may have believed. Once again, I'm not saying believe now, but believed in the past that, you know, I needed a label, that I needed a box, so forth and so on. So we have to remember that we must be willing to be constantly compassionate because we are being compassionate with ourselves. You know, you can call it other people if you wish, but we have to remember that those other people are only a projection of our own consciousness. And of course, my view doesn't mean I'm right, doesn't mean I'm wrong, just the way that I view it. And that has really helped me to become even more compassionate and more kind because instead of just being like, oh, you know, this or that, I'm just like, you know what? I'm just, I need to be compassionate in this situation because I, I was there. Like, I know this, I know this because these are just my thoughts coming back to me. And so that's going to lead us into our next one, which is kind of about judgment. And it's about the spiritual ego. 
And we've all, I, let me tell you, hey, you can raise your hand in the comments if you want. I know I've had a spiritual ego. I am not going to sit here and tell you, oh, I'm perfect. I know. Ev no, because <laughs> that would be spiritual ego. I had a spiritual ego and it was, you know, oh, I'm doing so much good. Oh, I'm, you know, I can work with these other people because they're high vibrational. Here's what I have to say about that. When it comes to high vibration, low vibration, this vibration, that vibration, whatever, this energy, that energy, once again, I would like to present to you this idea that the ego, once again, will try to get other people who feel that they are special in this one particular thing and you all come together and then you all are in hell because your relationship is not built on the truth of who you are. It's built on the label that you have made of yourself. And so when we are saying, once again, that this person is high vibrational, this person is low vibrational, well, then we're going back to the idea of separation. And we have to remember, you know, instead of saying people, oh, and this is, and this is just personal, my pet peeve, like once again, not here to, you know, <laughs> to offend. But one of my personal pet peeves is I really dislike when I see or I hear, which is my own lesson in forgiveness, people that will say the muggles or the unawakened or this or that. And to me, that this doesn't feel right now before oh god did it <laughs> of course it did before because i had a spiritual ego and i was like i'm so awakened <laughs> no no not at all and so for me it was you know what that really helped me to be even more compassionate and say you know what everyone is at their own level i'm not here to judge your level of consciousness not at all that's not my job my job is to simply assist you in whatever way the divine informs me to do so. That's what my job is. My job is not to judge your level of consciousness and be like, oh, you know, look at those muggles out there or look at those unawakened people or, oh God, they're so this or, oh God, they're so that. And something Marianne Williamson said that has stuck with me ever since I watched like one of her talks, which was... The only way that you can see if someone's in their ego is if you're in yours. And I tell that to all of my students all the time. I'm like, guys, if you're saying someone's in their ego, the only reason you can recognize they're in their ego is because you're in yours. Hey, Kelly, I am doing well. Thanks so much for joining and for being here. Ron, I have to go. I will catch the replay when I get home. Good night. Have a wonderful night, Miss Shirley. Thanks for joining. Thanks for being here. Thanks for joining in. Always appreciate your contribution to our discussions. And so, you know, as we continue on, we just have to really remember that. That's it. You know, that's, that's all, really. <laughs> so I want to... Let's see. I think I want to open it up for some questions based on our topic. Anything that has kind of come up for you. And once again, there's no stupid questions here. This is a discussion. And if you don't agree with me, it's totally fine. It doesn't mean that I'm right and you're wrong or you're right and I'm wrong. It's just a discussion. Like, and that's what I love about having these. So once again, I want to open the floor up to questions, comments, or concerns that you may have about our current topic, about anything that we have currently gone over up to now about specialness and that need to be specialness. So I'll kind of do a quick review for those who are just joining in and for those of you that are typing in your comments and giving you time to do that. So we know that the need for specialness comes, in, comes from the ego and the ego is nothing more than the idea of separation. And we have our first question. Do you think there are situations where the ego is useful? I always felt like it was an interesting perk of humanity. The label we are accepting. If we don't label, we're accepting the wholeness. Yes. So do I believe that there are situations? I believe that... The ego, like I said, for me personally, is nothing more than the idea of separation. And 
we can choose either to feed into that idea and you know once again the ego is an idea and we can either choose to give it more energy or not in my opinion it's an idea so it's not good it's not a good idea nor is it a bad idea unless we kind of give it that context you know the like i said it's all about separation it's all about you know this is how it sees itself it is the cover that we have built to that and if you look at it from a darwinian point of view instead of a spiritual point of view from a darwinian point of view yes the ego is extremely useful because we used it um to you know create identities so and to kind of climb up that social hierarchy but if we look at it from a spiritual point of view the ego is it's an idea that keeps us separate from remembering the truth of who we are because we have become so accustomed to that being our only identity like us being a personality and only a personality that you know it kind of gets in the way of well i'm not just a personality i'm not just a body i'm not just to this i'm not just to that you know all of that stuff and so for me personally in my personal opinion doesn't mean i'm right doesn't mean i'm wrong just my personal opinion i do not believe that the ego from a spiritual perspective is useful yeah, you know, I believe that it's it's just there to hint in really there to mask over the truth of who we are. And our journey in spirituality is to realize that the ego is not the truth of who we are. But like I said, from a Darwinian perspective, it has been useful. It's that survival mechanism, you know, in many different forms. So spiritually, I don't believe the ego is useful. From a Darwinian perspective, it had its uses. So then Miss Karen says, are we at different levels because we are younger or older souls? Well, let's answer that question. So there really is no such thing as a younger or older soul. Once again, my opinion, uh, because we are all one. We are all one entity. That is, we're one soul just in different bodies. And so no one is an older soul or a younger soul. Now, if you look at it from, you know, once again, that can be a belief in specialness and a belief in separation because now you're saying, well, I've been here maybe 970 time times and you've only been here nine times. So I have so much more knowledge and wisdom than you about the earth and you only have such little wisdom. So we have to be very vigilant that the ego doesn't try to use that. And then she says, like, this place is new to some souls, but not to others, which is why I may keep banging my head against the wall in one area of my life and not another. It's just that you're half a step ahead in one area of your life where, you know, someone else may be half a step behind. For me personally, I believe that everyone is a student and everyone is a teacher. And if you're a teacher of something, you're just half a step ahead of the other person that you're teaching nothing more than that. I don't like to say that there are old souls or new souls because for me personally, then that just facilitates that belief in separation. And that's not something I want to do. I want to continue to strengthen my belief in unity, in oneness, in, in all of that. So for me personally, I don't believe anyone is an old soul or a new soul. I believe that we are all one infinite soul because in, in the stint of eternity, what can you measure as old? In the stint of eternity, what can you measure as young? You know, we are all one thought in the mind of God or if you would like, you know, the mind of source. But I, like I said, I use the word God, but we're all that one thing. So like I said, if it, now if that helps you, that's okay. Like to believe in old souls and new souls, that's totally fine. But what you have to be vigilant of is not to let the ego take hold of that idea because like I said, it could then be a detriment because it's like, oh, well, I'm a young soul and, you know, this, 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 or I'm an old soul, this, 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 you know, come up with conditions to make it special. And we don't want that specialness. You may have, you may have a unique perspective. You may have a unique expression of, you know, of the divinity within you. But we all have a unique expression. All the children of God are special, so none of them are special. At least just, that's how I see it. I'm loving these questions. Thank you for asking them. 
once again, I'll continue to open it up to more questions if you have them based on our topic for tonight. And as I wait for you guys to type in your comments, if there will be any more, we'll continue to review what we were talking about, uh, which is just, you know, the ideas of specialness and everything we've kind of talked about. So where does specialness come from? It comes from the ego. The ego is nothing more than the idea of separation. Um, how can we tell when it, when the idea of specialness is present in our lives? It's when we identify ourselves with what we do, what we know, or what we possess. And examples of that, you know, can stem from a multitude of different places. You know, you don't really go up to someone and introduce yourself and say, hi, I'm Ron Schaefer. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a light worker. I'm a grid worker. I'm a this. I'm a that. I'm a that. You know, I'm a miracle mindset coach. Once you don't go with all of that stuff, you just say, hi, <laughs> my name's Ron. It's nice to meet you. Um, the ego is the part of us that needs to have a label such as, you know, light worker, empath, so forth and so on. Do you think motherhood is an ego? I'm in my three, third trimester and I feel like I've been relating to this label more and more now that we are talking about it. Well, I believe that it can be used by the ego, but I also believe that it can be used by the spirit because like I said at some point during this whole wonderful <laughs> expression uh, is that whoever you give that idea to, if you give it to the ego, then yeah, it can definitely be used as specialness. But if you give it to spirit, spirit can really show you how it can be used for the coming of your peace. Because if you look at it from you know the ego that may be the coming of your destruction and when i say the coming of your destruction i don't mean bad things i just simply mean that instead of seeing the wonders the joys the all of these wonderful things you know you may have an experience that's kind of like a roller coaster where if you follow spirit and let spirit have that idea of motherhood then it can be a totally different ball game so once again it depends on the consciousness in which you give motherhood to. If you're giving it to the ego, then yeah, the ego is going to be in control of it. But if you're giving it over to spirit, then spirit will, you know, be able to use that. Coming up my piece, that resonates. Gotcha. Wonderful. So just like I said, give it over to spirit. Let spirit inform you instead of you informing you based on because we know something's coming from the ego when you're building a perception based on what you already know or what you believe that you know because in truth we have all taught ourselves very poorly we have taught ourselves what we think we are but we have yet to let what we are teach us and that's a bit that's something that i am still in the process of undergoing letting the truth of me teach me what i am instead of teaching myself what i think i am so then the ego will always want to put a title as, you know, we go throughout. Yes, where it comes from. Good point. Wonderful. I'm so glad that that is an understanding. So yay. Uh, and then, you know, if my, and then this is how you can really tell if there is an idea of specialness. You can say, if my role was taken, this title or this relationship, would I suffer? Would I be less than without this title or without this relationship? The ego makes the mask to hide from you your true value. That's, that's really what the ego does. It hides your true value. Oh, love this. This has been such a wonderful discussion. So once again, just keeping it open to your questions, your comments, and your concerns. There are no stupid questions. There are no bad questions. There are simply your questions that you have. So if you have any other further questions based on our topic for tonight, feel free to put those in to the comments. I'm gonna take a quick drink because I need one. <laughs> because I have been talking, I feel like, for a very long time. Hey Asia, thanks for joining, thanks for being here. Such a pleasure to see you. 
Oh, I'm not doing any cards. We actually were just having our spiritual discussion on specialness or the need for specialness. Uh, and that's what we were talking about. Not so much reading anything, just, yeah, having our, our spiritual discussion. And so, yeah, <laughs> that's what we were doing. So I'm just waiting and see if anyone else had any other questions, comments, or concerns about our current topic. Or if there were any other questions, comments, or concerns about our current topic. Now that we've kind of done our review, we've kind of gone over it. Sorry, I meant the text or the book you are reading. Oh, uh, it's just the book that I am referring to is A Course in Miracles. That's what I am, that's kind of what I am pulling all my information from, the, the Course in Miracles, the text. So yeah, that's where I'm pulling all this from. And here's, here's my edition of A Course in Miracles. It's right here. Here it is, see? ACIM, A Course in Miracles. And this is just kind of, oh, it is a very, it's a wonderful text. I, <laughs> I invite everyone to read it because I just think it has changed my life personally. Um, and that's why I have my ACIM support group where we go through the different lessons uh, each, each day. So tomorrow is actually lesson 121 that we will be reading and excuse me, reading and going over at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Forgiveness is the key to happiness. So that's what our lesson will be for tomorrow. We're going to be doing a lot of, it's like a three-page lesson. So we'll be reading that, going over that, so forth and so on. What else have you learned from it? I want to join. <laughs> what else have I learned? Wow, that's a lot. I mean, I feel like it's been a ton. Oh, goodness. I'm just trying to pick up like key things. Well, number one, forgiveness is the key to happiness. Um, number two, I've learned um, that I have, like I said, I have taught myself what I am, but I have yet to teach, I have yet to let the truth of me teach me who I am. I've learned the truth of who I am, that, you know, spirit I am, free of all limits, safe and healed and whole, uh, free to forgive and free to save the world. Can you post the book name afterwards in the comments? Of course I can. And I'll go ahead and post my group as well. If anyone is interested in joining, it's free to join. I go live every morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and I read the lesson. Now, unfortunately on that page, I can't see your comments for whatever reason, but I always go back and I kind of read the comments. And if there is questions, comments, or concerns, I will always go back and you know type you a reply. So... Yeah, and well, also, since we are restarting our lessons uh, that aren't a review, we will, if that's something Spirit guides me to do, for the, actually, I think it was like the first, what, 50 lessons or so, we have, um, we did a question and answer. So we read the lesson in the morning, and then at night, we actually did a question and answer session about the practicing and about what we learned in it. Have you learned anything in terms of having a better romantic relationship or what to do better in the future? Oh, goodness, yes. I have learned that there are special relationships and holy relationships, how to enter into a holy relationship, not to, and actually when it comes to about the future, not to worry about the future, to be present in the moment, to put set my goal as peace for anything. I mean, there has just been so many beautiful things that I have gained from from this book and you know the different lessons that it has us go over and how we can apply each lesson to our lives and sit in whatever situation may enter oh goodness well that's a whole different topic for a whole nother day but I will give you the briefest of synopsises um, and the best way that I can describe a holy relationship is the relationship is where you see the other person and the other person sees you. Both of you realize that both of you see the light in one another and neither of you are trying to get anything from the other. You simply walk together in happiness because you know the truth of who you are and you know the truth of who they are. So that's just a very brief brief synopsis of what a holy relationship is so uh, 
Yeah. Well, thank you so much for asking those beautiful questions about the course. You know, I love the course, which is why I talk about it and why I talk about all the different topics that come, come up from it because it makes me happy <laughs> and brings me a lot of joy to be able to share uh, all of this beautiful information. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, I am so glad that that can be a beautiful reflection of a holy relationship in your life. Beautiful. All right. Well, my friends, I thank you so much for joining me. I thank you so much for being here. If you are interested, like I said, I will post uh, the book and I'll post my ACIM support group if you are interested in joining. Uh, it's free to join. I go live every morning at 8 a.m. And then uh, I always announce if I'm going to go live for a Q&A and the time in which I'll do that. And let's see, is there anything else? If you're interested in, you know, a reading, a mentorship, or just, you know, wanting to find out more about me or any of my other free things that I have done, feel free to go visit my website, awakeningmiracles.org. Uh, that's where you can find all the different information about me. Uh, and that's where also you can find all my free blogs. You can find my five day video of, or five free videos of tuning into guidance. Uh, you can also find other spiritual discussions that I have done that you may find interesting. That's under my blog section. You can go under my virtual learning, uh, section and that has, you know, some $10 courses that are pre-recorded that if you're interested in, uh, looking at, you can look at those. Yeah. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for being here. I send you all of my love and I look forward to our next spiritual discussion.